Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Uh, as anyone who's been shooting for a while knows, uh, eventually you'll tend to accumulate odds and ends of different types of ammunition for any given caliber that you've been shooting long enough. Uh, in this case, I was looking at my collection of 12-gauge ammo, and it occurred to me that I really need to start cleaning out some of these odds and ends. So, I mean, here today I've got a couple of these uh, uh, dirt clawed rounds that I tested a while back. I've got one foster slug, one shooting star slug, one rope dart. Uh, boy, these look like reloads. They've got the Rio primer that I usually use but they're crimped shut, so there's no, really no telling what's inside those. Uh, these are some old paper shells that I probably inherited from my grandfather, uh, who passed away back in, like, the 90s. Uh, these are marked steel shot, and it looks like they might be corroding a little bit. Uh, here's some more of the paper shells. Anyway, I've just got all kinds of odds and ends here. You know, what's sometimes referred to as a dog's lunch of ammunition. Uh, dogs, of course, being famous for dining on things like roadkill and whatever other uh, miscellaneous and disgusting uh, fare they can come up with. Anyway, so I thought the most beneficial use for all these odds and ends might be just to feed the dog's lunch to my reverse cycle pump action shotgun and see if we can't knock over some steel targets with it. Uh, so I've got steel targets set up downrange. I'm going to run this kind of like a quasi-tactical course, although since the magazine on this reverse pump shotgun never really worked very well, as you know if you've seen my video on reverse pump shotgun failures, um, I think what I'm going to do is just single load these. So not a lot of rapid fire, but should still be entertaining. Anyway, let's get started.
Okay, so this was my first time ever trying to run my reverse cycle shotgun uh, on the clock, as they say, or in a tactical course like this. Truth be told, since I built it, I haven't really shot it all that much. Uh, and we discovered a couple of new failure modes today. Um, first of all, as you may recall, if you've seen the videos on how I built this thing, the there's a uh, a lever that pivots to hit the firing pin. The hammer actually flies backwards, hits the uh, transfer bar, and that's what kicks what kicks the firing pin forward. Uh, however, I guess that transfer bar actually sticks out just a little bit below the bottom of the uh, bolt here, and so. There's, there's just enough play in it that sometimes, if I run the action all the way forward, or run the barrel forward, that bar will actually drop down and lock the gun open, and I can't close it. And the solution for that uh, is just to point the muzzle of the gun up in the air and jiggle it around a little bit till the bar falls back into place. So, uh, just kind of a little quirk of the design. I could fix it by shortening that bar, just machining a few thousandths off the end of it. Maybe I'll do that sometime, but I'm not really in a big hurry because I don't shoot this gun all that much. Uh, the other thing that we saw was some ammunition failures. Uh, these red paper shells in particular, uh, every single one of them separated into two distinct components upon firing. Um, and I noticed that the, the brass is a lot thinner 
than what I've typically seen on modern cartridges. So I don't know if these were made to a different standard or made before standards existed. Uh, anyway, I guess the moral of our story here is don't assume that old ammunition from uh, of dubious pedigree necessarily meets modern standards. Uh, but this, I think, is mostly an ammunition failure. Uh, the green ones, I'm not entirely sure, because one of these worked just fine, and then the rest all seem to be giving me light strikes. They, they won't go off. Uh, I have had intermittent problems with light strikes in this gun before, as I talked about in the, the video on failure modes. Uh, I had modified the spring a little bit, and I thought I'd corrected that problem uh, by, by making the spring a little bit stiffer. Uh, it set off all of the other ammunition just fine, but for some reason, these green paper shells, uh, most of them don't want to go off. So I'm not sure if they're just using, a, again, a, a different non-standard primer that's a little harder to detonate, Maybe they're using a primer that's corroded and, and they're duds. I mean, these are really old shells, and they probably are corrosive primed. Uh, so I want to make sure I clean this gun good after this. But I think as one more data point to try and diagnose this ammunition, I'm actually going to switch to the Jefferson and see if we can get these green shells to fire. So let me go grab my other shotgun, and we'll do that next. Okay, cut. All right, I got the Jefferson out here. You know, my reverse pump action shotgun is not exactly ideal for running a tactical course like this, and the Jefferson is even less so. But sometimes the fun of these courses is doing what you can with what you've got. So let's see what we can do. Well, four of these uh, green paper cased shells were actually duds. Um, the Jefferson has a pretty powerful firing pin spring, never really had problems with light strikes in this gun, so uh, I'm convinced that these four are in fact duds, uh, bad primers or something, and perhaps in ammunition of this vintage that uh, should not be surprising. Um, obviously, I did not get very far through the course uh, shooting the Jefferson here, um, but perhaps that's not surprising either. And in any case, I did manage to clean up my supply of dusty old uh, miscellaneous 12-gauge ammunition. So hopefully you found this video entertaining, uh, with ammunition availability being what it is right now. I imagine there's a lot of people who are sort of shooting the dog's lunch of ammunition in various uh, venues at the moment. Uh, so perhaps it's relevant, uh, something a lot of people can relate to as well. But in any case, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.